I finally have the chassis recapped. I've been through it and a lot of the carbon resistors have drifted high, but uh, I'll leave them as they are for now. They're not too far out and if I do have any problems I'll replace them. There was one that was so far out I had to replace but the rest uh, don't seem too bad. I've replaced all the paper caps and checked the remaining caps. There's a couple of caps that are possibly suspect but tested okay. Um, the electrolytics I've taken off and restuffed so they've got um, new capacitors inside. The rest of it I've checked and it all seems fine. There were uh, two components I found that had been replaced in the past and um, the reason I know they were replaced is because the leads had been cut off and just joined end to end. Um, I tend not to do that when I'm recapping uh, chassis. What I do is I uh, remove all the old solder and unwind the old lead, wind the new one back on and solder it into place. It gives a much better uh, look and it's also much more secure and it's likely to last a lot longer. Um, chances are it would last if you didn't do that, but I'd prefer to do it the right way and um, it just uh, gives overall a better impression when it's uh, finished. Uh, so onto the top and you'll notice that one cap I put the case back on, the other one I've left the case off. I'll put the cover back on uh, later. I've left it off for two reasons. One is in case you were interested in how they look inside once they're done. Uh, but the other reason is it gives me easy access to some of the uh, test points I want to initially check to make sure that the uh, the B plus voltages are uh, what they should be. Incidentally I misspoke in a previous video I said this was the rectifier tube and it's not. Um, not quite sure what I was thinking at the time but uh, this is the rectifier tube. It's a 6x4 so it's a, a dual diode uh, rectifier and when I initially start testing, I'll fit just this one tube and that will allow me to get some power going into the unit without the other valves starting to draw current and that will give me a, a good check to see if um, the B plus rises the way it should. It's probably going to go way too high because firstly the valves won't be drawing any current because they're not there, but also I have very high mains voltage where I am, it's around a 255 volts. So everything tends to run uh, fairly high. Uh, so I'll need to keep an eye on the voltages on the electrolytics to make sure that um, they're not exceeded. The originals were 400 volts. I've replaced them with 450 volt um, capacitors just to give a bit more headroom. Um, but what I'd, I'll do now is initially power it up with no tubes in whatsoever. This is a parallel strung um, heater chain that is all the heaters are wired in parallel rather than series which means that I can plug in any particular valve and the heater will still come on. With series strong units you have to plug them all in or put dummy um, loads in otherwise you won't get any uh, heater current. Uh, it does give, give me an easy advantage that I can put in just the rectifier and it will still come on. But before I do that I want to make sure that we're not going to blow the rectifier um, heater uh, wide open if there's a, a wiring fault, if I've made a mistake with the wiring. So we'll bring a meter in. I'll connect the meter to the terminals on this particular um, tube. They, they're all wired in parallel as I said, so whichever one I pick it's going to give me the correct um, voltage. As I said it will be high because there's no load on the transformer, um, but we'll power it up. I'm powering this through a dim bulb tester. If you're not familiar with dim bulb testers, then it's just uh, simply passing the current going to the unit through a bulb, it's an incandescent bulb. And the idea is if the current goes too high, rather than this unit absorbing huge amounts of power from the mains, all that will happen is the bulb will start to glow, its internal resistance will increase and it will self-limit the current. It will also give you a very immediate and clear uh, idea as to how much current the unit is drawing and you can tailor the particular um, wattage of bulb that you're using for a particular unit so that you can pass enough current to it to actually work but give a, a factor of safety if there is something wrong. So I'll power this up. There'll be no um, high voltage B plus um, on the DC rails because the rectifier is not in um, but we should see a heater voltage 
on the meter. So it should be, uh, it should be about 6.3 volts. But as I say, it'll be quite a bit over that because we don't have any load on the transformer. Okay, so I'll power this up. Okay, we're getting 7.5 volts. Incidentally, this bulb is wired in parallel with the uh, the heater chain, so it's a good indication that um, there's a, a, a heater supply. What I'll do now is I'll plug in the rectifier uh, and then check the um, heater voltage again. It should be a little bit lower now, although I suspect it will still be higher because with just the one tube, there's not that much uh, load on that particular um, supply. But I'll turn it off before the tube has a chance to warm up. I want to actually monitor the B plus as it rises, but I want to first check to see um, what the, uh, the heater voltage is. Okay, so as you can see, that's come down quite a lot and it will come down even further once the other tubes are in. I say, okay, I'll switch to uh, DC and now we'll monitor the B plus as it starts to rise. Okay, so I'll power it up. start to monitor one of the B plus lines and as soon as the rectifier tube starts to conduct which it is doing now we'll see the B plus going up and it should go up um, probably over 400 volts we're now at uh, 450 I'll turn it off because I don't want to um, over voltage the capacitors like I say it's gone up very high because nothing is drawing a current and um, because this is just purely resistive in terms of the way the voltages are derived, it means that without any current flowing through the tubes, then you'll get uh, all sorts of uh, weird voltages uh, around the unit. And I don't want to start blowing up uh, capacitors by letting it uh, go too high. But uh, the good news is that the B plus started rising quite uh, quickly. It went nice and high, so we don't have any shorts or uh, paths to ground that we shouldn't have. So what I'll do now, is put the rest of the tubes in and again we'll monitor the B plus line when I power it up and uh, make sure that that uh, doesn't go too high. Okay we'll start with the 6CG7 it goes here and the 12AX7 normally there's a shield around this tube I've taken it off uh, just so I can see uh, what's going on and so it doesn't get in the way uh, but I will refit that presumably this is the microphone preamp so um, it uh, is there to stop the uh, tube picking up on and now the 12 AX7 and then finally the 6P6 Okay, I'll power it back up and again I'll monitor the B plus voltage to make sure it doesn't go too high. It should stay a lot lower this time um, and as soon as the valves all start conducting it should pull that voltage down quite a long way. So I'll turn it on. You notice the dim bulb tester is glowing now very dimly because we're drawing more current and we can see that the B plus voltage is starting to rise. and now it's staying well below the maximum voltage for the capacitors. That'll start to drop down again as the other tubes conduct and start drawing current. Um, but if it suddenly starts to drop down or if the dim bulb tester suddenly gets a lot brighter, we know we've got an issue. So all the tubes are glowing. The voltage is stabilizing. And what I'll do now is I'll go through all the uh, various lines, uh, power supply lines. I do have a schematic for this. And what I want to look at first is uh, this section here to check that all these voltages are what they should be. And assuming that is all correct, then what I can do is move on and start checking the rest of the circuitry to uh, see if it's doing what it should do. Um, the point we were measuring was here, by the way, it's saying 380 volts on the schematic, 
and we were seeing over 400 like I said I do have very high mains voltage here and uh, that uh, of course causes uh, quite a high voltage there also we don't have the speaker um, connected and we're not driving a motor or anything so this will drop down even further once we get the uh, all the connections made and the, the whole thing uh, wired up okay I've tested all the voltages they're all correct what I'll do now is um, put the uh, can back on this capacitor so you can see once it's refitted it makes quite a nice uh, neat job and um, once the two of these are properly uh, uh, bonded it, uh, it doesn't make the unit look the way it should uh, but of course we now have new capacitors in there rather than the old ones that uh, would probably have failed uh, fairly quickly once I've got this done I'll try um, putting the chassis back into the case connect up the um, various parts and then I'll power it up again and see if the unit comes to life I won't put a tape in straight away because I, I need to check it's not in record mode I don't want to uh, erase the tape uh, and like I said they're quite hard to get hold of and I want to make sure that this is uh, definitely in play mode before I start um, putting a tape in just a few small jobs to complete before I start to reassemble the chassis the first one is to replace the uh, rubber mounts that sit between the baseboard and the transport mechanism if you recall the transport mechanism was sitting right down on the board and uh, it was transferring vibration through to the uh, chassis you can even see here where it's been resting on the actual piece of wood that's just a very simple um, piece of wood that's been machined to uh, hold the various parts where the bushes sit there was just a recess and the bushes had completely disintegrated so that the metal was sitting on the wood and it pretty much bored all the way through the wood so what I've had to do is make up some um, brass bushes to sit in here so they're quite a tight fit and they're pushed um, as far down into the holes as they'll go and I made them the right thickness so that it uh, positions the spacers at the right height and then I've just got the uh, uh, new bushes they go through the holes the top mount goes on the top of course and then the bottom mount screws through and it sandwiches the whole thing but the brass um, bush will now stop the whole thing from sinking any further through and it's the right height to bring the transport mechanism back up to the height it should be sitting at there'll be a bit of weight in here of course so it'll go down slightly further than this but it'll sit about there Okay, so I'll get this bolted in, we'll have a quick look at it, and then I can start to reassemble the complete chassis. So I have the chassis installed back in the machine. I've uh, bolted uh, all the major parts back together, reconnected the various parts, checked that the um, pulleys run freely, nothing's binding or catching. And uh, what I'll do now is tip it the right way up and see if uh, it actually does anything. So I'll try installing the tape and I don't know if this tape is actually blank it's, um, it's like it's one that's not pre-recorded so uh, maybe no, nothing on it at all in which case um, I'm not sure how I'll know if the machine's uh, faulty or the tape is just blank but I'll put it in, we'll give it a try the tape surface looks fairly scuffed so I don't know uh, quite how successful this will be um, but I'll give it a try and see what uh, it sounds like if um, it plays at all Now of course it's going to play slow as I said because um, it's got the wrong speed pulley in for 50 hertz operation, it's a 60 hertz motor so it will be running 20% slow but um, at least it does seem to be working. I won't play too much because I'll end up with a copyright strike on uh, YouTube but it's a successful first test. <laughs> 